Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to create an interactive JavaFX application. So we're just going to set this up. Um, so here's, here's the application from the previous tutorial. And we're going to change this so that you can click a button and it just sets the text in a label. And along the way, we'll see how um, elegantly um, JavaFX organizes uh, this kind of thing. So. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the tutorial from last time and uh, which just displayed an image of a cat and didn't actually do anything and paste it in Eclipse here and let's call this an interactive program program there we go and I'm gonna um, close this introducing scene builder program just to reduce confusion. Let's make sure this hello world is also closed. And now, so this, this should still work if I just run this. It should work as before with this cat image of a cat. And I'm gonna to go to Scene Builder now, and I'm gonna open the FXML file from the application that I just created. So let's go to File Open and uh, browse to JavaFX got a folder here that I've created called workspace and here's my interactive program and I'm gonna open main.fxml here and I just want to check that I've um, opened the right one so I'm just gonna delete this image and go to file save and go in Eclipse on my um, I'm gonna right click my project folder and go to refresh and now let's just run this and check that we get a blank window. So we do, so it looks good. Now let's let's go back to Scene Builder and um, I'm gonna use a different layout here. I'll use um, Border Pane, which if you've done any swing programming, you'll recognize. I'm just gonna drag Border Pane onto my Anchor Pane like this. And, uh, and let's expand it so that it takes up all the space here like this and uh, if I go to um, with border pane selected if I go to layout here in the inspector on the right I can just click these anchor um, constraints so that when we resize the window the border pane will resize with it because the edges of the border pane here are anchored to the edges of the anchor pane with um, no space in between, so it should uh, resize with the anchor pane. Now, a border pane, um, I believe anyway, is similar to Swing's border layout uh, in that it lets you um, it lets you position components in the center or at like the top left, right, and bottom positions. Uh, so let's let's put a couple of components in here. I'm going to scroll down and look for a button here. So under controls in the library, somewhere we've got button right at the top in fact. So let's drag that. And uh, when we move it over the anchor pane, we can see the different positions in the anchor pane that we can put controls. So, uh, sorry, not anchor pane, the, um, the border um, container, border layout thing. Uh, so I'm going to put the button in the bottom here yeah, what's it called? Border, border pane. Um, so yeah, border panes, like border layouts in, in the previous toolkit swing, I guess are really good for um, creating applications where you have, you know, maybe a toolbar at the top and a, something in the main area and uh, could be something on the left or right. I'm, I'm guessing it's the same thing as in swing at the moment, but we'll, we'll um, I'm sure, investigate that later on. So uh, let's let's select the button here and let's go to layout, and we can select the alignment here within the border pane constraints section. Let's um, let's set it to center and see how that looks, and we can also give it a bottom margin here, it says margin under layout when we've got the button selected and let's let's type like 20 and hit return so it just floats a little bit off the bottom. So these constraints under the layout section for button they apply to um, whatever constraints you can set 
uh, given that it's now within a border pane container. I'm also going to add a, a label here. So if we scroll in down a bit under the, in the library here, let's find a label and let's drag that maybe into the center position here. And I'll just expand it a little bit, give us some more space and make it a bit wider because I'm going to put some text in here. And I'll select label and let's go to properties in the inspector with label selected and let's change the text. Actually I'll just get rid of the text in fact and um, hit return so the text has gone from the label. You'll notice you can, you can style the label a bit here. Um, I'm not sure if this, this center thing actually works um, but not to worry because in the next tutorial we're going to look at styling this application using style sheets. So I'm, I'm going to make something here that just works and we'll look at styling it in the, in the next tutorial. I'm also going to um, select button here and for the button properties I'm going to change the text to click me. Hit return and there we go the text changes on the button. So let's save that and um, let's go back to Eclipse. Right click the project, go to refresh and hit run. And we get this. So it doesn't do anything at the moment. If I, uh, yeah, I can't resize the application here at the moment. That's because I made it non resizable. But let's just get rid of this. In fact, I'm not even sure how to quit it. Let's right click it and go to quit. Get rid of the icon there. I'm not sure why I couldn't quit that. But anyway, uh, so. I'll go to uh, my source here and main and app.java and let's get rid of this line that says set resizable faults because I don't want that anymore. Save it again and run it. There we go. So I, I can quit it with this thing here. I'm not sure what happened before. But now if I run it and I resize it, let's make it bigger. You see that it resizes nicely because we're using border layout. Um, the button stays in the center and it stays 20 pixels off the lower edge and the label hopefully is also um, resizing nicely although you can't see it because I deleted the text from it. So let's make this actually work. I'm going to go to my, um, my main package here where, where I'm putting all my code and right click and go to new class and I'll call this main controller. So we're going to create a, a controller class which can get information from the user interface and can then tell the user interface what to do. And um, I suppose potentially it could get information from a data source as well, although I haven't looked at that yet, so I don't know, but I'm sure we'll get onto it later. And uh, I'll click finish. Now, um, I notice a lot of controllers implement initiali initializable. So I'll make it implement in initializable. And at this stage of my knowledge, again, I'm not sure if that's really necessary, but we'll do it anyway. Let's say implements initializable. And uh, click the error icon and go to add unimplemented methods. And that just adds this initialize method, which we're not actually going to use here. So um, possibly this is unnecessary. But anyway, I'm going to give it one method. And that method is going to be run when we click the button. So I'm going to make it a public void. Um, let's uh, call it something like show greeting. And that's going to accept one parameter, which is going to be an action event, which I'll call event. So I'll add the import there, and it's very important to add the right action event. You need to make sure you're adding this JavaFX event dot action event. Let's click finish uh, when you add the import. And just just for the moment, let's just put this out in there, and just say hello. Let's say hello world. Well, it's not quite hello world, but um, that'll do. And uh, save it. Now I'm going to go back to Scene Builder, and uh, so so we've got a main a class called Main Controller, and it's got a method called Show Greeting. So I'll go back to um, Scene Builder here, and I'm going to 
go to the anchor pane, select the anchor pane, which is the root node in the scene here. And uh, if we look at the inspector, we've got a section called code. So I'm going to go to that and here I'm going to set the controller class. If you're lucky, it will appear in this drop down, but I'm not quite sure under what circumstances scene builder refreshes and here it, it's not showing anything. So let's just type here main controller and go to file save. Well, it is saved apparently. Oh yeah, I need to hit return to actually make it accept that. And now I can save it. And then I'm gonna to go to the button here, click the button, and um, we've got this on action here. So I'm gonna, using this drop down again it's not working at the moment, but I'm gonna set that to show greeting, which is the name of my function in my main controller that I want to run when I click the button. Again, I'll hit return to make it accept that, and I'll go to file save. So if you look at the FXML now in Eclipse, we need to refresh it. So right click the project, refresh, and um, go to main.fxml. So we can see here that the anchor pane, let's just expand this, has hopefully set the controller, fx colon controller equals main controller. That's set for the anchor pane. And uh, for the button control here, uh, we can see that we've got on action set to hash sign show greeting. I think in America this is called a pound sign. Um, in Britain we call it a hash sign and a pound sign is our currency symbol. So, um, so that specifies what method to run when the button is clicked. So let, let's try that. So I'll click the, um, I'll click the um, project and hit run and uh, something's, something's evidently wrong here. Uh, so it's saying class not found exception main controller. Oh yeah, that's because I forgot that the main controller is in a package. Let's go back to scene builder here and uh, select the anchor pane and I'm going to change this to main dot main controller. So I created this package called main and put the main controller in that and of course this has to be a fully qualified package name otherwise it's not going to know how to find it. So I'll hit return and then click save and go back to Eclipse, refresh my project and run it again. Hopefully this will work and if I click the button now we can see that in the console it's saying hello world so we're responding to button clicks. Uh, the, the next step is to um, actually change the text on the label so let's go to um, let's go to maincontroller.java and I'm going to give this a private member variable. Uh, in fact yeah let's let's give it a private label and um, I'll call that greeting, greeting label, like that. So this is going to be my label, and let's add the import there. And we need to again get the right one. Don't have Java.awt. You need Java.fx.scene.control.label. Click finish. And whoops, let's spell this uh, in the American way as well. And I'm going to um, annotate this with the annotation FXML. And this, this is kind of like a um, auto wiring, I just added the import there, sort of auto wiring type annotation that will find that label and wire it in here. But for it to find it, I need to give it an ID that matches the name that I've given it here. So let's copy this, this variable name and go back to scene builder, select the label and here in the code section of the inspector, we've got this FX ID and I'm going to paste in there the name that I gave to that variable and hit return. And then I'll save this and go back to Eclipse and right click, refresh. And let's, let's just check as well that, um, that that actually did get set. So I'll just go to my FXML and we can see if we look at the label that it's got the FX ID set to greeting label. I think it's a good idea as well to get into the habit of looking at the FXML regularly because it's, it's good to know what's going on there. We, we might need to edit, edit it by hand at some point. So um, now if I go back to my main controller, now 
um, that should be automatically filled in. We can check actually, let's do sysout and greeting label. And if I save that and run the project and click the button, so we should see that we, we get like a, a meaningful string here. If it's null, then you got something wrong in the, in the previous step. So um, now we can access the label here and we can say greeting label dot set dot set text and I'll set that to hello world. And we'll save that and just run the program again. And now if I click the button, wait for it, it says hello world. There we go. It's not going to do anything else now, that's all it does. Um, and if I uh, if I resize the application, it should resize nicely as well, so everything remains in the center. Well, it's still uh, very ugly, but we're going to fix that in the next tutorial to some extent, and uh, we're going to look in the next tutorial at style sheets. And uh, if you've done any swing programming, you'll you'll appreciate how much nicer this is than what you have to do with swing, where you'd have to set up your own um, sort of um, controller class and you'd have to wire, stu wire stuff together with um, the observer pattern and so on. And I think this is really a lot nicer. We've just got this magic annotation that finds the label automatically. Okay, so that's it for um, this tutorial. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button and um, I hope you'll consider also going to www.caverprogramming.com and signing up to my newsletter here and I'll email you with the latest stuff that I'm creating probably about once a month or so and uh, you also get a load of special offers there. So that's it for this time and until next time, happy coding. <laughs>